Hi guys, so in this lecture video, we will go over the solubility of ionic compounds in water. So when we take an ionic compound and we add it to water, not all of the ionic compound would actually dissolve in water. For an example, sodium chloride. We all know this already because this is how we make soups, right? Uh, so we take sodium chloride, we add it to water, it will dissolve. If we do the same thing, and now we use sodium carbonate instead, then when we add sodium carbonate to water, it will not dissolve or insoluble in water. So what is going on? And now, so before we go over what's going on, it's very important that as a chemistry student that you are able to determine whether an ionic compound is soluble in water or not. And that is important because in order for us to learn about chemical reaction, we need to learn about the solubility of ionic compound, whether they're soluble or insoluble in water. So in this lecture video right here, I'm going to teach you the basics to understand solubility. And so the more we understand this, then the less that we have to remember. Because this is one of the topics where students spend a lot of time memorizing the solubility table. But in this class right here, then again, I'm going to try to break this in the easiest way that I know how to help you understand about solubility of ionic compound. And you will then see that once you have this understood already, it really is very, very easy to memorize anything if you want to memorize them. And if not, you don't actually have to memorize anything at all to be able to determine whether an ionic compound is soluble or insoluble in water. So let's get to the solubility first. So in general, the stronger the attraction among the cations and the anion, because that the types of attraction that we see in the ionic compound, right? They consist of cation and the anion. And in general, the stronger the attraction between this ion, then the less soluble in water they would be. So here's a diagram to show that here we have our cation and our anion. And in any ionic compound, these cations and anions are attracted to each other through the ionic extraction. And the stronger this ionic extraction, then the less soluble this substance would be in water. Okay? And now here are the factors that affect the strength of the ion attraction. First, charge. The charge of the ions matter. The bigger the charge of the cations and the anion, then the more they would be attracted to each other, right? Because plus two and negative two will be more strongly attracted to plus one and negative one. So the bigger the charge of both the cations and the anion, then the stronger the extraction would be. And the stronger the extraction would be, then the less soluble they would be. So that's the first factor, the charges. And second, the size of the particle. The bigger the size of the cation and the anion, then the weaker the ion extraction would be. Because in the end, how, the, how strong, how close the cation and the anion are together determine the extraction as well. If they are very tiny, they get very close together, and that's when they attract each other more. But the bigger they are, then now it is the distance. There's a distance that separate them, and therefore the extraction become weaker. So again, the bigger the size of the particle, the weaker the ionic extraction would be, and therefore the more soluble it would be. Good. So big char equals to strong extraction, and therefore less soluble. Versus bigger particle, weaker extraction, now more soluble in water. So if we so we can actually by this looking at the charges that make of the cations and the anions that make up the ionic compound, we can make a really good prediction of whether or not it will be it is soluble or insoluble in water. So let's now go over several scenario. If we were to have a cations, and now the cation is plus one, and the anions is negative one then a lot of time, they would be almost always soluble. And the reason why is that plus one and negative one, this is about the weakest types of extraction that we see in ionic compound, right? Because plus one and negative one would be the lowest kind of charge that we can have. So therefore, they are weak 
and therefore they be soluble in water. Now there is an exception to this. If we were to have a silver ion binding with halide, halide is when we have a halogen with a negative charge, then that would be the exception to this. Silver binding with halide would be insoluble in water. And the reason why it get the halide, if we look at where they are, are on the periodic table, they are pretty small, right? Because they're on the right side of the periodic, periodic table. And we see the size decreases as we go from left to right. So halide have small size. When they have small size, they would now be able to come closer to the cation. And then that make the extraction become stronger. And therefore, they are not soluble in water anymore. But for the most part, if we have plus one and negative one, almost all of them will be soluble, except for silvers with halides. Now, if we were to have a cation that is plus one, and an anion that is negative two, okay, well, now the extraction becomes stronger, right? In which that it is as follow. They will be soluble if the cation and the anion are polyatomic. So if we were to have a cation that is plus one, and an anion that is negative two, or if we were to have a cation that is plus two, and an anion that is negative one, then now we see plus one to negative plus one to negative two and plus two to negative one, and so the extraction now becomes stronger, right? So therefore, they seem to be less soluble, and that's correct. But then they will be soluble if the ions are polyatomic. Because polyatomic ion means that it consists of multiple atoms in them. So they have they are big in size. And so even though they get big in char, but now their size are increasing as well. So that makes the ion a further apart from each other. So therefore they now tend to be soluble in water. If the ions, the cations, and the anion are polyatomic. And they sum up the exception to this, and uh, which we'll discuss down here on this solubility table down here in a little bit. And if we were to have ionic compound in which the charge of the cations and the anion are negative two and negative three or positive two and positive three, then a lot of time they're mostly insoluble because now the cations and the anion are strongly attracted to each other due to the higher charges in here. And therefore they tend to be insoluble. So solubility is all about the strength of the extraction between the cations and the anion. And the strength of the extraction is dependent on the charges and the size. Yes, size does matter, guys. Okay, and so uh, we're going to go over some of this solubility table right here because, um, and you will then see that pretty much everything we see here on this solubility table right here reflect what where what wherever that we have discussed in these three cases right here but then because but then this solubility table down here have some of the exception and we it's actually quite easy for us to understand that exception as well if we understand what is above here and really i would highly recommend that you guys understand this part right here because understanding this it will help us eliminate memorization of this solubility table. Okay, and in the end, we can also break down as follow. Things that are always soluble. If you must remember something, then remember this. Okay, group one. If an ionic com consists of the group one cations, then it's always soluble. Good, and the reason why the group one's cations are always soluble is because they are only plus one, right? Group one have a charge plus one. So that pretty low charge is right there. And that's why they're always soluble in water. And ammonium as well, because ammonium is a polyatomic ion. So this is a big ion right here. And now it is actually only plus one. So it have a low charge, but big size. So that's why they're always soluble in water as well. So any ionic compound that consists of this ion right here will be soluble in water. Good. And if we were to have a polyatomic anion, and the anion is negative one. So polyatomic negative one anions tend to always be soluble with the exception of hydroxide. Hydroxide consists of only two atoms in it. And the reason why this is the case is because if we were to have a polyatomic ion, that means it's a big ions. And now it's only negative one. So now we have low charge and big size. So this is why it's always soluble as well. Okay. 
hydroxide is the exception to this because hydroxide is pretty small. And now down here, um, let's we'll go over this solubility table as well, and you can see how that it pretty much correlate to whatever that we have discussed up here already. So here in this case right here, solubility table, this is very common in many general chemistry textbooks that they would discuss this table right here and perhaps ask students to memorize this table. But you would then see that a lot of this, what we discussed here on this solubility table actually reflect what I have just discussed from above. So here in this case right here, it says soluble. Here are the substances that are soluble. So almost all ionic compounds consider of sodium, potassium, and ammonium. These are basically what we have discussed above here already, right? The group one cations, they would always be soluble. And ionic compound consists of nitrate, nitrite, chlorate, perchloric acetate. All of these are soluble as well. And it makes sense, right? Because these are polyatomic ions. They are big ion, and now they're only negative one. So therefore, they tend to be soluble. And the only exception that we find here is that acetate of silver plus are insoluble. Well, that makes sense right there, right? Because silver plus, it is a plus three charge. So if we have acetate, which is only negative one, and this is plus three, you can see that they can be strongly attracted to each other because of the plus charge from the aluminum plus three ions. So therefore, that will become insoluble in water. So there is an exception for acetate. Okay, and almost ion, all ionic compounds that consider of chloride, bromide, iodine are soluble in water. Well, this makes sense, right? Because they're only negative one. However, if we were to have halide or silver, halide of silver become insoluble, and that is the exception I mentioned to you earlier already. And the reason why is the silver ion is pretty small, and the halide is small as well, so therefore they are, uh, they, they are strongly attracted to each other. Okay, and uh, so fluorides, most ionic compound consider fluorides are soluble in water. And these are the exception right here. And all of this exception right here involve things that are positive two and positive three, which makes sense, right? Because uh, fluoride is only negative one. And now it binds to something like plus two and plus three. So therefore it would be a strong extraction among the ions and that's when they become insoluble in water. But if fluoride binds into anything that is now negative, uh, that is negative, uh, that is plus one, then we can, they, they will always be soluble in water. And now sulfate. Sulfate are mostly soluble with this exception right here. Sulfate bind into the calcium plus two, strontium plus two, barium plus two are insoluble. And that makes sense, right? Because sulfate is negative two, and this are positive two right here. So this is why they're insoluble in water. So that go back to what we discussed, we see, have seen here. Plus two and negative two, insoluble in water. And when we go over here, the insoluble compounds, so ionic compounds, they consider carbonate, phosphate, oxalate, and chromate are insoluble. And that makes sense because this have high charges, right? But now look at the exception. If all of this, if this ion right here were to be binding to the ammonium or the alkaline or the group one metal, then that when they fall into the exception and now they become soluble. So anything on the exception here. So here we give you a list of insoluble substance. So the exception over here, whatever fall into the exception on this list would now make them soluble. Okay. And that makes sense because we have seen this earlier already. And so far is insoluble and that makes sense because so far is negative two and it's pretty small. So have high char and small size. So therefore it tend to be mostly insoluble. That makes sense. And oxide and hydroxide as well. Hydroxide because it is small. Okay. So I think that this solubility table right here very much correlate to what we have discussed up here already. And honestly the table that I have outlined above here cover pretty much everything that we have seen on the solubility table down here. So you can either understand this, so you don't have to memorize this solubility table. Good. And now let's try some of the practice problem to make sure that first we know how to do this. 
So determine whether each of the compound is soluble or insoluble in water. And if a substance is soluble in water, draw how it would break into ions. So let first one. Silver bromide. Now silver bromide was the exception we mentioned at the beginning. So this is insoluble in water right here. Okay. And if we were to, let's make sure that we know how to correlate to the solubility table in here. So in this case right here, we have silver and bromide. So you would then look for things that you can identify. We have a rule for the bromide, right? And we see bromide is right here. Most of it are soluble with the exception of silver. So we can now this one to the exception. It goes from soluble into insoluble. So this is insoluble in water. If we were to take this and dissolve this in water, it will not break apart into the individual particle or ions because it is insoluble in water. And now let's now go over the second example, calcium chloride, CaCl2. So here in this case right here, we would then see the calcium is plus two and the so calcium is plus two and the chloride is negative one. Okay, so that this extraction has become a little bit stronger now. But here in this case right here, calcium chloride, it basically is insoluble. I'm sorry, it is soluble in water. Okay, and that go back to what we have just dis discussed over here. So we have a positive 2, calcium positive 2, and the chloride negative 1. So they would be soluble here in this case. And if we were to go down to calcium chloride down here, we have chloride. And now we see chloride don't have the, uh, the calcium and not listed at the exception over here. Okay, so in this case, this is soluble in water. And if this is soluble in water, when we take this and we dissolve this in water, it will then be broken into ions, in which it will break apart to form the calcium plus 2. And now that will become an aqueous. And now we have formed 2 of the chloride. And now this will be an aqueous as well. Okay. And now, C. Let two nitrate. So here in this case right here, it's quite easy to see that all ionic compound consists of nitrate would be soluble in water. And the reason why this is a, a nitrate is a polyatomic ion that is negative one. So therefore it's a big substance with a small size. So therefore it's soluble in water. So this is soluble. Okay, please try the rest of this.